Hi guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to work on shaders. This time we are going to make this dragon appear using all procedural shading. So let's get started. So right now you have a jade dragon, which you can download for free at academicphoenixplus.com. And it has been uh, reduced, believe it or not. The topology has been reduced and it's got a lot of crazy geometry, but I didn't model it. So just FYI. Okay, so what we wanna do is make this dragon slowly appear. So I am going to hop over here into my texturing tab, which I build in a previous tutorial. And if you want to do the same, you're more than welcome to. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn off opaque. Opaque means that uh, this object will be transparent. So you have to turn off opaque so Arnold can read it. And when we render it, you're going to notice that it is just a directional light and it's very, very simple. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to dock it at the top here so I can see the magic happen and scroll out a little bit. All right, cool. I'm actually really excited about showing you guys this. All right, so let's let's go ahead and assign an Arnold AI standard. So go to right click, assign a new material. Let's go to Arnold and just grab a typical Arnold AI standard. Sometimes it shows up here, so just press F. If you don't see it, just right click on the shader itself and do graph network and it will appear. So we're gonna be focusing on is the transparency. So we're gonna be ignoring the base, which I'm gonna crank up to one. We're gonna go to specular and then we're gonna go down to geometry and we're gonna play with opacity. So the way this works is that when this is white, it will show as being solid. And when you scroll to the left all the way to black, it disappears. So what we wanna do is drive that. We're gonna be using two nodes. The first one's gonna be AI noise. So go ahead and tab and start typing in AI noise and you're gonna see it there. Select it and press enter. And the other one we're gonna use is AI range. Now I do have a tutorial on these two nodes as well. So feel free to uh, use that if you wanna know a little bit more about both of these shaders. So we have AI noise and AI range. I'm gonna connect the out color. So you can grab this little red dot, go to input and just drag it and connect it. It automatically will place it in the RGB. And then I'm gonna grab the out color here and connect it into opacity. Okay, cool. So let's see what we get. We're not gonna get very much, but let's see what we have. So I'm gonna press play and it's turning semi-transparent and it's giving us this interesting render. So we really need to be able to control our noise first. So let's select the noise and we're also going to click on this little guy up here. This basically will render just a particular node that we selected. So if I select this node, it will only render anything that's been affected by the shader and AI noise will show you this. So I have AI noise selected. I'm gonna go and increase my octaves to about seven, maybe even eight, which increases the quality of the noise. And if you want to, you can just kind of mess around and kind of distort it if you like. You can also increase the lacuity, uh, lacunarity. I know, I pronounced it wrong, so sorry. Um, and then after that, we can go and increase the scale two by two if you like, or more or less, it's up to you. Artist choice, this is my, this is what I decided. Let's see what type of effect we get. We go to AI standard and you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of that transparency and also some solid areas. I'm gonna let go of this render so we can see the full scene. So you can see that it affects the whole thing. All right, going back to this. All right, now we're gonna mess around with AI range. So AI range basically is going to help us kind of crunch our values. So the closer the input min gets to the input max, the more it's going to basically fade away. And same thing with, oops, I better stop this. Press play again, there we go, it's back. Uh, same thing with the other way, right? So you can see how that works. And then if I go all the way to the left, you'll see that it kind of disappears. So I'm just gonna crank that value up pretty high. Um, I might need to type it in, but let's see what that looks like. So with the AI standard selected, you can see that only a couple of areas are actually transparent versus uh, everything else is solid. So it's gonna be really important to get those values in. So let's see if I can get it up to 0 0.05. And that's actually looking really good, 0 0.01. All right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. So now it's solid white. So when I go to AI standard surface, you're gonna notice that it's basically solid. However, if we flip the values around, go back to my AI range, and I crank this up and 
get these values to disappear like that, then my object, there's still a little transparency, it's basically transparent. So how do we make this disappear? Well, we are going to keyframe it. So let's go ahead and bring back all of our values back for when it was appeared. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get as close as I can to 0 0.01. Might as well just type it in. I'm in frame one over here and I'm going to right click, set key, right click, set key. Then let's say that I wanna been about 30 frames, maybe 35 frames. You want this value to appear. So I'm gonna stop this for now. Let me refresh that. And let's go ahead and bring these numbers back. Now notice that sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm gonna stop. And if I right click and say set keyframe, it actually will appear, the values will start to appear. Oops, and I have to press play. See, right click, set key, right click, set key. There it is. Let me see if I can get a little darker. Trying to get that value. I'm gonna change this to one. And then let me see if I can get it to Again, it's kind of like experimenting a little bit. There we go. So now by set keying all of these, usually if I just go slightly higher than one, so 1.1, for example, and then again, set key. Whoops, that's probably too far. So let me see the effects, set key. And there we go. Now it's completely black. Maybe a tiny little dot. That's probably the point one that is uh, not in the min max, but let's see what that looks like in the actual render. Let's turn this off. And there's a couple little speckles here and there, but overall, if I go to frame one, you're gonna see that the dragon appears. And as I start scrolling, you're gonna notice that the dragon will start to disappear. Ta-da, pretty cool, huh? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dragon here, grab that AI standard and let's use a preset. Um, I think this little guide looks better as, let's say, hmm, I used Jade before. So let's try, let's do gold. And then I'm gonna increase the roughness because it's a little bit too pretty for me. And I'm gonna go to, you see how it's got a bunch of like it's almost like it's um, like low poly and kind of disintegrating like. I'm gonna select the mesh and then go to mesh display and just soften. And now we're getting a nice, it's looking a little bit softer. It depends really what type of look you want. And then we can start from the beginning. It looks nice and solid. And then it starts to slowly fade away. Cool, I'm also going to delete this light. And I'm gonna stop this really fast, go to Arnold. Lights, it's just at our basic physical sky. Press play, and now we can see it much, there we go, that looks a lot nicer. Let's pop this up so we can see the full thing. And now we can watch it disappear. So this is a really fast and easy way to make something appear or disappear depending on what you want in kind of like a mystical way. It's very interesting, it almost looks like it's peeling away and then it finally disappears. Uh, and the only thing we did was drive it through procedural shading. So hopefully that was helpful. I thought it was kind of interesting and uh, I kind of enjoyed it. But let me know if you guys have any questions at all, but it's really, I would recommend that you just try different things. You can use different shaders. You can use, um, you can use other things like ramps. And as long as it's the, the information is black and white, you can do just about anything to make this disappear in the way you want. So thank you again for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, don't forget to comment below, make suggestions for future videos, and also like and subscribe. And take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Um, I always post, that's where you'll find tutorials, uh, eBooks, and free downloads to your heart's content. So thank you again for listening. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you next time.